Welcome to Boundless Word, the video podcast from St. Matthew Lutheran Church and Early Childhood Center in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois, and we are in the middle of reading a book of the Bible by the name of Hebrews. It may not be one you're very familiar with, but we have, have been reading this the last couple weeks, and today we're in chapter 6 of Hebrews, and we're also going to be in Psalm 65. That will start off our prayers today, so I'm glad you joined me. And if you want to get your Bibles out, again, Hebrews 5. If you have a Lutheran study Bible, it's on page 2111. And we will begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away, to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God, to their own harm, and holding him up to contempt. For land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed, and its end is to be burned. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust, so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in in serving the saints, as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anger of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place beyond the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. There's that name again, Melchizedek. Next week in chapter 7, we'll go more into detail about who Melchizedek was and how Jesus uh, fulfills him and is the new and greater uh, high priest. This chapter might sound a little uh, unnerving or downright confusing. What the writer, I believe, is trying to tell us is don't put your assurance on the way you have always done things. Even if you are a lifelong Christian or a lifelong Lutheran even. Uh, you have done the same liturgies day in, week in and week out. You have uh, celebrated the sacrament the same way every single week even. Some people do that. Um, you, you, you're, you're building on that foundation. The, the writer to the Hebrews is cautioning us to not build our foundation of our faith on tradition. Tradition important, but we need to build, build our foundation of faith on Christ himself. That's what he's getting at here. And he's going to unpack that more uh, as he shows uh, with Melchizedek. So we'll have to wait on that a little bit. But I hope this was encouraging to you. Let's turn to our prayers. And this will be Psalm 65 to start us off. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. 
we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who, by his strength, established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and of the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Father, thank you. This is a wonderful psalm to pray as a psalm of thanksgiving and certainly is the most appropriate time of year here in the United, in the United States as we celebrate Thanksgiving coming up very soon. Lord, you have asked us to pray, and so we have certain things that are on our minds. I'm sure that the person watching right now has something on their mind. Lord, help them deal with it in prayer to you. If it is a healing, help them to be healed. If it is peace in their heart or soul, comfort them with the sure and certain peace that can only come from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Lord, as people are now making their final preparations for Thanksgiving, I pray that you will help them, guide them, but also urge them spiritually to take a moment to give thanks and to meditate upon your word. I pray this in the most precious name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you will keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And now go in the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for joining me for the Boundless Word video podcast. Join me again next time. Go with the blessing of the Lord.